Good morning this Saturday. Just wanted to come on here and uh, just kind of with the last couple videos we had out, <clears throat> I know exactly what, what those, uh, those in the religious world uh, may be saying about the videos that I put out. If anyone is uh, putting it out there and saying, hey, what about this and what about that? So if you're, if you're asking the questions, uh, two of the things that the religious world is, is, is saying to try and validate, which I don't see as a validation at all, but this is this is what they're saying, and this is may have been some stuff that they may have brought to you to try and counter um, what I've been allowing, bringing light to on these things. And I just wanted to bring those things forth and let you know that we're we're not ignorant of what these people are going to say and what their their arguments are, but. Just to let you know how um, weak these arguments are that they represent to us um, are one and the same. So <clears throat> anyhow, two things, what they're saying. <clears throat> so what they do is they say, OK, basically they're validating um, religion. Uh, the way the church is set up today, the way that they have their hierarchy and all these things, the Catholic and, you know, all your denominations and, and how that uh, they they claim that, hey, you know, from the manuscripts, uh, these all in general, in general, on the whole outset, um, they all say the same thing. And 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 you can say that there there is so many uh, variants of scripture out there Um but based on this, it doesn't change the message. And that's what they're saying today. They're saying, you know, 98% of the things that you say is, is a variant and not 100% word for word what God said or what was in the original manuscript and it has been changed doesn't change the whole meaning. It stays within the character of what is being said. So, and I've pointed out to you, even in that, even in their own uh, canonization or their own acceptance of these books and sayings of Jesus, it still does not make any sense. Jesus was claimed to be God, was, was accused of being God because only he could forgive sins. And we brought that out the other day of how they went on to say, in that scripture that Jesus said that they too could forgive sins and they could hold sins. Uh, they, could, they could not forgive sins. So if you think that God put in the hands of man in the grace dispensation after he came in the flesh and, and, and all the writings that we know of him, that he had done good to people and did not come to judge, and you're going to turn around and say that he is given the authority for man to hold on to your sin and not forgive you, and that God in heaven is going to stand behind that flawed human being's judgment to not forgive you when Jesus himself, in the body God prepared for himself, took to the cross, put his own precious blood on the line for us, and took authority, and you're going to say that he gave that back to man to deny us a right of forgiveness or the grace that Jesus brought us, then you, my friend, are mad, and you are off in the religion that they wanted you to be in. So to, to think that those things are true, and, and the whole meanings of some of these are still valid. So one of the arguments they say the validating is by mere volume on the subject of religion or the Bible or the, the manuscripts, uh, such as the Codex, uh, Sinai Atticus, and the, um, uh, the, the Vaticanus. There, there is saying that, in, and from the Vulgate and all the Bibles and all the stories, the, the, the New Testament and all the writings of Paul and, 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 and other writings throughout there, 
the whole 27 books of the New Testament, they're saying that none of it is tremendously altered from the whole principle of what is the meaning of what is being said. And so this is what they're saying, and they're saying the volume of all the other writings based on these manuscripts of other writings. And so let's just back up. So they're saying that in secular areas, by the way that they have validated certain topics or subjects, is that they hold a lot less volume of other people validating them, and we accept them as valid on a whole lot less chatter outside of that or other um, writings than what religion in general or the writings of the Bible has. And this is another thing that they are trying to get you to believe that because of the volume of, of the conversation around religion is so vast and larger than other things that we have come to accept or validate with far fewer uh, writings or conversations about is one of the things that validate this in itself, which to me is something void of facts. And they're trying to just push it through like that, which we all know is is just a just a way of them trying to say, hey, you know, based on this circumstance, based on that circumstance, then we might as well believe this. But see, again, they lack facts. So that's what they that's what they um, move to. That's what they resort to to try and in the end get you to say that. Well, that's okay. Two can play that game, and we're gonna we're gonna end this with playing that game that they're playing. But we're gonna be more sure about what we say, opposed to what they say. So anyhow, so they can't secure their arguments with facts. So there's still no concrete documents or manuscripts of the original. It does not exist. And again, like I said last time, we don't know how many copies. Now, they, just because they say this is the copy of a copy that we have in the, in the middle of the 4th century, 350 A.D., 320 A.D., 330 A.D., I mean, uh, for the Vaticanists and, and the Sinaiticus. So just because we have that, and then they turn around and say, this is the copy of a copy. Well, I don't know that it isn't the copy of the copy of the copy of the copy of the copy. I don't know. And I may have destroyed that word, but you get the point. So here is the end question. They try to say that the mere volume of conversation around the manuscripts, the topic of religion, is, is far more than other things that we have accepted. They say that that in itself is worthy of validation. And then the second one, they say that other people that have quotes that are part of these manuscripts also validate in other areas um, and books and, and writings. So they say that validates this. But none of this validates because we don't even know. The, these people that do say it, we don't know their biases in the beginning. So just because they said it, we don't know that person. Nobody's bringing out and saying, hey, this person is unbiased or this person said it because of this. We don't know what their intentions were or are. But I can tell you one thing. Here is the real end of the question. Here is the real validating point that I will make and make sure today that is a fact. The fact of the whole thing is, does what they are pushing fly against the face of Jesus' teachings? Okay, That's a question we have to answer. And the answer is yes, it does. Based on their own approved writings of Jesus, it flies against what Jesus taught. 
and we've covered that in the previous videos. I'm, I'm, this is going to be a small video today. I'm just, just making this point because I know exactly what the devil and what these, these uh, people that are out for their flesh and, and, and out for their own life here on this earth are going to try and, and make this of none avail and, and try to push this argument away and, 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 and get you to believe that they're doing fine and I'm, I'm the one out in the weeds. I'm not out in the weeds on this. I can tell you that. So another point, does their theology bring gain to man opposed to Jesus? The, question, the answer to that question is yes. It brings gain to man. It does not bring gain to Jesus. Okay? So there's here's the end questions. Not, not is there enough volume? Is there more volume to validate this over the other things we've accepted? Not because there are so many people that have quoted certain things from a manuscript that they say that this is the framework of, of religion and this is why it's valid. That's 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 humbug. That is not going to carry the water. And then here's our other one. Does this build a physical building or organization? Does this build up things for man? Does it transfer wealth from people to corporations and organizations? Yes, it does. This brings in hierarchical, this brings in authority for man, this brings people into bondage, this brings people under the authority of man and not freedom that Jesus set us free with. And this is not of God. Does the end results glorify God or man by this religion and by their interpretation of what they say the manuscripts have meant? And again, I will reiterate, the scripture is finely woven with truth and deception. And man has altered it to favor man, not the teachings of Jesus. That is the problem. And this right here, 1 John 2 and 16, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of God. There's your answer. What does religion bring? It brings authority. It makes you slave to man. It puts hierarchy back into what Jesus said it wasn't. You see, when Jesus came, he said, In whom the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. But see, as we said before, if Jesus was going to carry over the old law, he would have went to the Sanhedrin court. He would have got buy-in from, from these people from the top. He would have went to the priest. He would have went and, and, and just like a political um, campaign, he would have went and got the approval of all these authoritarians, these 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 religious of that day. He would have got them on board. He would have won them over. And they would have backed him. And they would have said, you know what? We are transitioning. Not that we were wrong, but this is what God wants. They would have been behind him. But Jesus knew that wasn't going to happen. He knew that man was never going to relinquish their own greedy power. And he came the way that he did because he had to, because of man's lust of their flesh, the pride of life, and their pride of their eyes of the world, their lust for power and greed. And he knew it would never work that way. And that's why he came and he changed it all because it was an imperfect way. And so looking at that, when, when Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world, it's not of this world, you're going to build heavenly rewards and you're gonna you're gonna find that jesus said you're gonna have life more abundantly through me and he said that through my name they're going to what despise you 
And that's what this is all about. If you go preaching and teaching and exposing what I'm exposing today, you will be hated because you're going against their money. You're going against their power and their authority. This is the, this is the government in high places. The government is in the church. The government is in the church. That's why you have the hierarchy. That's why you have, oh, I, I got to listen to my pastor. Oh, uh, if, if it doesn't come through your pastor, then God didn't say it. That's what they're saying. Some of the notable preachers that I have looked up to most of my life, and I heard it with my own ears, by their mouth on a video, watching them preach some revival, they call, and, and I listened to them from my own ears say those exact words, and I thought, my God, these people never did have it. They were just um, deceivers from the beginning, or they have been changed or turned. And this is where we're at today, folks. If you want man, here's the bottom line. If Jesus is real, you better stick with Jesus. If he's not real, he's not real for us, and he's not real for them. So no matter what I'm saying, doesn't matter anyhow. And for sure, double, double, it doesn't matter for them because they're taking what Jesus said and flipping it back to man. So if it's not true, it's not true for all of us. And what do we lose? We go back to ashes and dust and nothing's there. But if we're right, we have the true Jesus. If you're wrong, you have man. And guess what? If it's all right, you know what the end is for people that are not following Jesus. All right. I just wanted to bring that because I know these detractors are going to be saying that. And you're going to think that they have a valid point. But this is what I'm telling you today. This is not what is true. And they are giving you a wrong uh, answer here. So pray about it. Seek the Lord in it. And go in peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day.